Hello everybody and welcome back to Tutorial Tower. Today, I'll be showing you, not this door, but this door. Dun dun dun! Dun 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 dun! Sorry. Okay, I'm going to clear out space and uh, show you how it's done. Okay, so what I've done is I've just left what the blocks that are going to form the door are actually going to be. Uh, I've just left them here. So these are the bits that move, get moved. Um, the first thing you need to do is place down some frames. Frames move blocks that they are touching, but nothing else. So if I had these four and I moved them with this motor, if I could, um, it would move the blocks that this is touching. So the frames, or the frames the frames are touching, and these stone uh, blocks on either side of it. Now this is basically how the door works, and you want to build it four wide, and then the rest of the room width. And then if you need to move it four to open it, you want to dig one, two, three, four, this way. Oh, oh great, I've come outside. Hang on. As I was saying, you need four space away from where the door originally states, uh, stays, so I've put two on here just so you can put the motors here. Uh, this will also move stone. This will be the rest of the wall, so when the motors move the frames, all of these blocks will move that way, and that's how the door works. Okay, so I'm just going to do this, and then what you want to do is you want to put covers on every side that isn't going to be grabbing a block, so that this frame won't pick on, sorry, pick up on this frame, and that frame won't, well they need a cover so that it doesn't pick up on this frame, that's how frames uh, covers work, they stop it from grabbing. Now I'm going to cover all the sides that need it, and then be back in a sec. Okay, so I covered the ends and all the sides tops where it's not touching stone that I want to move and I also added one more block on the end just so that um, I also put this out one so it's still moving for I added that just because I like it there basically the next thing you want to do is you need to um, have a way of moving these frames so basically the, the tool that does that is a red power 2 frame motor so you need two of those one in one out and you need a screwdriver or a sonic screwdriver and you want to shift right click until you have it facing the right way no, nope, next one, no, nope, I missed it um, is that the right way? yeah that's the right way okay and you see this white patch here that's the direction it's pointing from the center that way meaning that this is going to move outwards I actually want this to move inwards so just normal uh, right click now now that moves in and I want this one to move outwards. I'll close the door, open the door, like that. Um, these need uh, energy supplied by Red Power 2 in the form of, well, you transport it with uh, blue alloy wire. So I'm going to get some of that. And I'm also going to set up a thermopile. Thermopiles will generate electricity f uh, passively with heat difference between like lava and water. So I'll show you how to set that up in just now. Okay, so I've placed a bat box here. This will uh, store the energy that the thermopile creates, distributed to this block, which will then give it to that block. So all these, all of these three and um, blocks will have the even power, or equal power, or distributed power, whatever you want to say. Down here, you'll need lava. Oh no, not can, bo bucket, and water. You'll need lots of water. I think I must have lava. There we go. Um, you want to put lava on the bottom. Put a thermopile there. And then all four of the sides, or three of the sides actually, will be. Hang on. Three of the sides will be uh, sort of on, filled with water. So you have the difference between the three water and the lava give, generating electricity in here. And then you need to run this blue aloe wire up into the bat box. So I'm just going to run it along the wall like that. Now give this a little while and it'll start generating electricity. I'll be back when it's done. So I gave it a little while and boosted it with some batteries and now I've got um, some power in here. I can show you how these work. So right now you can see that these four doors are here. And what I want to do is open it this way. So this one's open. Apply redstone signal. Wait. Apply redstone signal. Wait. Do this four times. And you can see it won't go any further, so I hit it five times there and nothing bad happened. 
and now you can see that this section of it is uh, broken out. Now you need to repeat the same setup on this side for this layer, and the same one again from above on that layer, and I'll show you when that's done as well. Okay, so I'm just um, doing my third layer. I've done the bottom one, the middle one, no, bottom middle one, the middle top one, and I realised that I didn't want to use another thermopile in the wall or something, so I took the bat box and the two motors and then run some wire up, ran some wire up here and placed what the seven solar panels around in oh on the roof sorry uh, so solar panels generate electricity for well blue trick electricity I think it's called something like that blue electrics from sunlight but of course when the sun's down it doesn't generate electricity so just bear that in mind all right we can do the last one back in a sec I'm back I've built all four layers and now I'm just going to be um, Closing the gate up, and then I'll show you. Well, they're working for the first time. I hope. I doubt it, but I hope. I've put stopper blocks on each layer, and the fourth block along. Um, that really helps. You should definitely do that if you haven't already. So now you see I don't have a problem with the opening too far. Close, close, close. Now this one. I've wired it so that the one on the inside uh, closes it and the one on the outside opens it. That just makes sense to me. So there you go. Now I just need to fill in all the stone. I'll do that and then be back. Yep, so I uh, tested it. All of the four layers work and they move, open smoothly. Um, now here comes the fun part. You have to wire all of it up. So what I'm doing is I'm just making space so that you can um, put open and close on separate wires. I have this point here to connect to the uh, close, this point here for the open, um, do the same here. So I need the cable to come in there and there, so that I can wire it all up. The bottom ones are easier though, so those two will be that for, for that one. Those two for that one. Now I'm going to use, where are the, if you go wires, or well, loads of different colours. I'm going to just clear my inventory. I need red wire white, orange, magenta and light blue. I'll use those four colours. And of course bundle cabling. Which carries all colours uh, but only sends a signal if you attach another colour to it. For example if I had loads of signals coming in here and I attached a magenta uh, only the magenta red, uh, magenta signal would pass through. So if I put on here then ran loads of bundle cabling and then put a purple here only the purple signal would travel, which is really nice. Uh, I'm going to need lots of that. So I'm going to use white for open. You can see what I'm doing, I'm just placing it on there. And I'll use orange for close. Like that. And then we need to join all of these cables together. I'm going to run them. This is outside, so I'm going to run the cabling this way I think, so this will be my cabling room. I'll just build it on the ground actually. Dig this out here and you'll see it when it's done. Now you need to collect all these cables as signals like this so that the bundle cabling is connecting to all of them which means I need to run like uh, this Run it along. I'm going to collect this side um, on the on route actually. So yeah, I'll just show you this. This is how to run cabling, guys. Yay! Where's my other cable? Oh here. Hmm. Now you see we have a problem here. We need this cable to come over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it like this and hopefully it won't cause any problems. So there, that's collected. This one's also going to be a pain, so I'll just run it like this. I actually want it there. Now you'll notice that it didn't join on the corners, now that's a real pain in the ass. So uh, yeah, that's the joint now. And then run it straight down here from there. So now we have the open and close signal on there. I'm going to dig out this room and be back when it's done.
See, here we go. This is our room just for circuitry. Now, some of you may be a little bit scared, thinking, a whole room for circuitry. Are you serious? But don't worry, I'll guide you through building it, and then I'll briefly explain how you uh, how it works. So first, I'm just going to run the inputs. This is going to be my input line. And then I'll run an output line. Yeah, nice and simple. The circuitry you're going to need consists of... Okay, so, wait, what was... Ah, I didn't set up buttons. Uh, yeah, I'll show you that in a sec. So basically, you want when a button hits, you want to trigger something. That's going to go here. This will hit something, and blah, 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 blah. Um, the gates you're going to need are a knock gate, pulse former, state cell, timer, and toggle latch. I think there's one more, but I'm not sure. You're also going to need a repeater, so just grab that as well. Um, right, let me just sort my inventory out. Okay. Timer, top of that, repeater. Alright. You want the magenta cable to come in and hit toggle latch. You'll need a screwdriver to reorganize uh, that. Reorient it. So you want it to go so that way. So this is outputting signal this way. You want that to go to a pulse former, to a state cell, to a knock gate, to a timer and then output or closing, opening, opening, which is white, it's alright, can't remember now, opening is white, yeah that's fine, and on the other side you want to also have a pulse former into a repeater, which you then want to run around in a circle like this. Uh, what was it? Repeater into the state cell, which has been placed wrong. Which then go into a not gate. Which will ah, uh, hang on, just move this back one. That'd be fine. State cell pointing into a not gate into a timer, which I've lost. Which I will then need to line off with a strip. So a strip will stop uh, redstone signals passing through red wire to the block adjacent, so like that. Let us place some standard red wire here. Place another strip here. Red wire there. Actually, I want this to be orange. Okay, I think that's everything I need, except I need to set up the magenta, so I'm going to put the button up now. Ah, no, I've forgotten something. I also need to connect up just a standard thing here. I'm also going to put strips here so they don't interact. Um, and this is going to run around into magenta, like that. Okay, now I want the button to be, I don't know, let's say... Right, so these are the four middle ones. Here, I want the button to be here. Is that fine? That is fine. Let's get some stone. The button's going to be here. Ooh, exit out here with magenta. So I need a red alloy wire. Magenta, and then I need to collect this signal. That's so fiddly. On some bundle cable, which is here. I'll run this down. Like so. Oh, I don't like that at all, so I'm going to run it this way. Like that. Now, when you press that button, it will tick here. And this is explaining it, by the way, guys. It'll tick here. Oh, I haven't set this up. You need to set up timing. So, 
you want it to move. Uh, sorry, this is going to pulse the motor. The motors can run at a maximum of 0 0.8 seconds at a time. So if you go to one second, oh, 1.8. No, 0 0.8. I'm going to turn the timer to 0 0.8 seconds on both sides. Uh, like that. And set your state cell up to whatever 4 times 0 0.8 is. Which is uh, 3.2 seconds. But you want to add maybe a tiny bit more just to be safe so that you know it's going to run 4 times and not more. So 3.3 seconds is what I went for. It worked fine. There you go, 3.3 seconds. Now, every time... This happens, it's going to release a pulse into here, which will run it for 3.3 seconds, turning off... We're constantly applying a single this way. Turning off the knock gate, allowing this to run 0 0.8 seconds every time it takes. Ticks four times, which opens that. Then when this finishes, it releases a pulse here which hits the magenta wire, which toggles that back which forms a pulse, which I think is going the wrong way it seems to be fine the repeater's the wrong way, that's what the problem is yeah, there we go and then that's going to run all the way around here except I've also applied that to the wrong side noob mistake, sorry guys That needs to be attached like that, so that it's going to hit this side. So now it's trying to open. I don't know why it's not working, but it's trying to open. Nothing's happening. And then it tries to close. And nothing happened. I don't know why that is. I'm going to have to check that out. But yeah, that's basically the circuitry. Um, let me troubleshoot and get back to you guys. Actually, guys, turns out it is working fine. Look, if I hit this, you can see it starts to open. It's only this gets stuck, and then it closes perfectly as well. Now, I don't know why this gets stuck. That I will have to look into. Might have something to do with that nasty creeper down there, but I'm not going to hit him, because I do not want this face to explode. Um, so yeah, if you did everything right, that should work. And you should have a functioning door. What did I do wrong? Oh yeah, this isn't going to work. This is trying to move uh, these stone blocks with this attached to it. Isn't it? Nope, it isn't. It's trying to move this stone block into here, which isn't going to work. So I'm going to have to rewire this with a bridge like this. And that should be a problem. Oh, of course it is. Fiddly wiring. Okay, I'm going to run it this way then. And because this is one big loop with the bundle cabling, you can pretty much run it to any point in the wire and it will work. So I'll do it like that. Now let's try it, shall we? Let's try and get out first. Is the button gone? I think it is. Now this is broken. Ah, such a pain. Okay, I'll be back in a sec, guys. I had to just make this loop longer, so uh, that was silly of me. As you can see, it's quite fiddly to get it right, but yeah, it's definitely rewarding. Um, adjustment. So it always, it's always going to open at the same speed. It's always going to close at the same speed, unless you want to make it slower by changing the timer in the pulse former. Just make sure that the, um, the timer runs four times if you have a four wide door. Uh, for the time of state settings. Anyway, if you want it to stay open longer, just make the repeater longer. That'll stop it from closing, obviously. That's why it stays open longer. And if I hit it now, everything should work. It'll stay open for a while, and then it'll close again. Hopefully. Or I broke it, one of the two. Probably the latter. Hmm. 
None of them were working. Balls. I just added a button to the other side of the door, so when you're inside and you've gone through the door, you can get out there. By the way, it was working, I just uh, forgot how long the delay was on that repeater that I just set. So it's a bit messy because I've had the wiring too low. All I have to do is move that in a longer loop all the way up there and it's done. So uh, that's the finished door. Fill in the gaps, everything, clean it up and everything. But yeah, as you can see, I've set the, time, the repeater to a really long delay. So the door stays open for quite a while. Change it, adjust it, however you want. It's fine. Um, thanks everyone for watching. I hope it wasn't too boring. I hope it was really useful. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.